Which HCC code categories are the winners and losers in the new 2026 risk adjustment model? In 2026, the transition to the new V28 model is a major financial and clinical shift. The V24 model had more codes and it technically meant more revenue. Now the clinical severity is more towards medical specificity. How clinically specified can you get with a lot of these codes? There are technically some big three losers in this category, but you can look at it as a different way to capture specificity in these categories. Diabetes, heart failure, and vascular disease. For diabetes, all type 2 diabetes now pays the same whether it has complications or not. High specificity no longer increases that RAF score. Previously, the HCC for heart failure, HCC 85, paid in one category and one payment. Now the severity is split between five HCCs, HCC 222 and 226, only for acute on chronic or end-stage heart failure maintains high value. Some plans must document specificity and class and acuity. And for vascular disease, we have removed HCC 265. This vascular disease high volume of formerly profitable codes now pay zero dollars. So underlying complications would have to be captured in another area to risk adjust to make up for that financial loss. The key there would be more specificity and better documentation. There are many areas that are no longer covered and metabolic malnutrition is no longer covered. You're going to focus under underlying conditions like GI or cancers. For mild and unspecified depressions, will not be covered. They will pay zero. Moderate or severe major depressive disorder will be covered. Common heart history codes have been removed. Peripheral artery disease is removed unless it is paired with ulcers or gangrene. And stage renal disease has a zero value. You're going to recalculate that to see if the patient has progressed to a different stage. Complications of neuropathy and PVD um, are only pay unless there's some sort of complication with diabetes. Neurological drug and alcohol induced have been removed. The general substance use without a current psychotic or dependent diagnosis pays zero dollars. Many status codes, colostomy for amputations as well, also pay zero dollars unless there is an underlying cause stated in the documentation. Last but not least, your status codes. All status of conditions have been removed. In the 100% transition to the new V28 model for 2026, CMS has removed approximately 2,294 ICD-10 codes that previously did generate a risk score. Now they kind of give an discretionary or uncommon or poorly predictive future cost. So they have been removed from the scale. This means that they were not a good indicator when it came to predicting the cost of healthcare. So they now have a zero value risk adjustment factor score. This is the zero value hit list. Notice how many formerly high revenue codes now have a 0 .00 RAF. We're gonna talk about the HCCs that have been removed and the ones that have been affected that now have a zero RAF. So arterial sclerosis, HCC 265, and our PAD, peripheral artery disease, are insufficient. You must document some sort of claudication, restless leg, or ulceration in order to get a peripheral artery disease payment. Atherosclerosis is also dropped of the extremities unless it involves gangrene or ischemia in that payment. So we have to be a lot more specific with peripheral artery disease in order to capture a RAF for that particular year. Angina pectoris unspecified has a zero value. Our coronary artery without angina pectoris has to be documented or under a standard or it has zero value. Protein calorie malnutrition, mild, moderate, or severe have been removed. There was a perception of overuse with it. In the nutrition category, only morbid obesity greater than 40 is going to be utilized. 
As we continue talking about this hit list with the HCCs, we have angina pectoris, which is zero dollars. You're going to query for unstable angina. You're going to look for arrhythmias or heart failure. You're going to make sure you document the claudication and the ulcers. Only ruptured or thoracic type retain high value when it comes to abdominal aortic aneurysms. So ensure that you look for that. Severe, moderate, and unspecified protein calorie malnutrition no longer generate a risk score. Obesity unspecified has been removed. Only morbid obesity greater than 40 will risk adjust. During explanation, the 100% V28 pivot. In 2025, if you coded mild depression, you still got 33% of the payment. In 2026, that payment drops to zero. We get to the mental health and behavioral health category. And the main reason I decided to make this video, particularly because I work in this area in mental health and behavioral health billing. I worked for about four or five months for a company that was wondering why they weren't getting any payments. When I pointed to the documentation needing to be more specific, they literally were kind of confused as to, well, why does it have to be specific? We've been doing this before. And I tried to explain that things have changed. To put it into perspective, even coding mild depression, you would still get 33% of the payment. In 2026, the payment will drop to zero. That is a significant difference in revenue. No longer using mild episodes, no longer using unspecified episodes. Things have to be extremely specific or the value will be zero to be captured for healthcare plans. And in the future, it won't be covered. for acute kidney failure unspecified and chronic kidney disease, they have all been removed. Dependence on renal dialysis, part C has also been removed. Age-related physical debility has been removed. You do have to document specific underlying chronic diseases to risk adjust. As well as sleep apnea unspecified, you must use obstructive sleep apnea if it has been confirmed in the documentation. So who would be the winners in all of this? How do we win and get on the winning side of this when it comes to our new risk adjustment model? In 2026, specificity is the key to accurate and maximum reimbursement. Accuracy and specificity are key. My name is Teaching Trends. Until next time, everyone, take care.